I would like to, you know, talk a little bit about King Hu and the legend of the mountain. In terms of um, what the Chinese uh, wuxia genre is about, the word wuxia is actually a combination of the words wu, which means martial, and xia, which are kind of Chinese uh, interpretation of chivalry. And uh, it originated as a serialized martial arts literature, um, and, it's, and it's very different from something like Kung Fu that people associate with Jackie Chan or, or like Bruce Lee, because a sort, um, wuxia is always taking place in the past. And usually the focus is not only on the, is mostly not on hand fighting, but more on swords and weapons. And also that the, the aesthetic beauty of the movement and the art direction is very important in conveying the film's philosophy. And King Hu, his importance to this wuxia genre is almost equivalent to that of like John Ford to the Western or Stanley Donen to the musical. He came to Hong Kong in 1949 after the Civil War. And he was the first filmmaker to infuse the essence of Zen Buddhism, as well as Chinese Confucianism, into this genre. Uh, his work reflects a very scholarly background in, like, every, in the traditional Chinese culture, like uh, you know, Chinese supernatural literature um, by Pu Songling, um, Peking Opera, which he adapted into like, the fight sequences in the many of his films, as well as things like uh, Chinese traditional music, uh, Chinese painting and art. And um, were, um, directors like Ang Li and uh, Hou Xiaoxian, they kind of made their homage to this genre in their films in very, very different ways, you know, with the Crouching Tiger and Hidden Dragon, um, which used a lot, uh, which utilized the kind of um, the movement that's very similar to, that kind of is a homage to, to King Hu, whereas the Hou Xiaoxian's The Assassin, like, tried to re recreate um, a certain uh, authenticity of history while talking about politics that King Hu was also very interested in. He made his first few films uh, were more like entertaining pieces that also brought action choreography to new heights, such as Come Drink With Me, which made the famous uh, actress Chen Pei Pei famous, and she was actually like um, playing the nun in Crouching Tiger. The film Dragon In, which is the opening from this film, is remade by the director Choi Hak, and then like uh, the the Malaysian director Tai Ming Liang also made a homage to that film called Goodbye Dragon Inn, which is a very slow art film. And The Touch of Zen, which many people consider his masterpiece, he basically reinvented this genre with an entirely new visual language. And for his achievement, he won an award in Cannes for the technical excellence um, in 1975. After that period, he started to move further away from the traditional martial arts film and the storytelling, and he started to push the boundaries of the medium uh, with two films that he shot in South Korea, in 19, um, which were released in 1979. One of them is Raining in the Mountain, and the other one is Legend of the Mountain, which you're seeing today. This film is arguably the most spiritual of wuxia films, because in fact, there's neither wu nor xia in this film. Um, and this is the, um, he adapted this from a popular, um, for, from a collection of uh, popular oral stories from the Song Dynasty. And this collection, of, um, this book, this text, this classical text is called Song Ren Hua Ben. And the story that he chose from this selection is about a monk who tells a scholar who failed his exams to go to the mountain. It's kind of like a, a kind of part-time job in those days. So he got this job and he's supposed to go to this mountain to uh, copy out a Buddhist sutra. And the place where he is in is at a place where there was a recent uh, boundary war between the foreigners outside of the Chinese border and the people. And so a lot of people died. And the, by copying out this sutra, the monk believed that he's going to help the reincarnations of all the dead souls. But uh, strange things start to happen to him once he goes into this mountain. Actually, because this story involves Buddhism and the idea of reincarnation, the theme of this film is really about transcendence. It's about transcendence in many different ways, because, for example, in wuxia films, the traditional way of creating drama is often about how you get different factions of martial arts trying to fight each other to get a, a, what they call a wuling bi mi xi, which, which is like a secret manual teaching you the most invincible martial arts. And here, he's kind of reinvented that and turned it into a fight between ghosts for this magic sutra that they think will help them reincarnate. In cinematic terms, the film also transcended the medium by lifting visuals 
storytelling into a kind of realm of poetry where everything becomes very abstracted. This abstraction is seen in the way that the mise-en-scene, the scenery that they shot in South Korea, the cinematography made it look like a Chinese inkbrush landscape paintings. And the way that the, the actress's clothes are designed and the art direction, he tried to make them look like um, figures in the sort of Chinese portraits of court ladies. Uh, they're called like shi nyu to. And on top of that, what's most, I think, revolutionary about this film is that, you know, the, the kind of traditional wuxia elements where you're fighting with swords and having combats, all of that is symbolized and replaced by the sound of a flute or a symphony of drums and cymbals. And the traditional black and white morality of wuxia, where you get the good guy and the bad guy fighting each other, all of this is transcended into the character struggle to overcome their worldly desires in the final enlightenment, which you see at the end of the film. And the two female protagonists are played, first of all, by Xu Feng, who's like the muse of King Hu, like she's in every film of his. And his films are always very female oriented. It's always they have a very strong woman and a kind of weaker, more passive uh, male, male character. And the other actress in the film is Sylvia Chang, a, an actress who's really famous um, and is also a very highly recognized filmmaker. And this film, um, when it was first completed, it was released in Taiwan. And it, um, the director's version was uh, 184 minutes. But because of the market demands in those days, they had to cut the film to two hours. But when they showed the film in the cinemas to the general public, because so much was cut, it became really fragmented. And the, then the audience came out saying, I don't understand what on earth is going on. And the film completely flopped. And they even, the, so a lot of the critics tried to save the film by organizing discussions and talks to, to help people understand the film, but it, it didn't work at all. And just when people thought this film's like uh, future was over, um, it was submitted to the Golden Horse Awards, which is the most prestigious um, award for Chinese language films even nowadays. And they submitted the original version, which is like, like longer version. The film ended up winning um, the best film, best director, best cinematography, best art direction, and best music score at the Golden Horse Awards. And after that, it was invited to many festivals, and people started to appreciate this film in the original version. Um, the print was, because it was produced by a Hong Kong company, the print was actually kept at the Hong Kong Film Archive until 2016. And finally, the Taiwan Film Institute uh, obtained the rights to restore this film, and they commissioned the Imaginin Ritovata Film Laboratory in Bologna. Uh, they have an office in Hong Kong. So they were commissioned to do the 4K remastering of this film. But this was a very difficult process because the film was already very damaged by mold. And because there were actually three different versions, they had to make a combination of all three versions to get the best one that was most similar to the original version. And they also engaged the director of photography, uh, Chen Junjie. Uh, who worked for King Hu for a long time to supervise the, the color correction. And because all of this was very difficult and it cost a lot of money, she filmed the actress in this film as well as in all his other films. She donated about 500,000 euros to enable this to be restored and shown around the world. At this time, with the rise of uh, Chinese cinema and the martial arts blockbusters always dazzling us with all these VFX effects and lavish production values, I think it's especially refreshing to see a film made in, made in the late 70s with a minimum amount of uh, VFX or other effects. It leaves much more room for imagination and meditation. So I hope you enjoy this film.